Welcome back to ShiftCast. This is episode seven. We just finished up the third regional or open qualifier three for Europe. And now we're headed to Copenhagen. We've got our 16 teams. I'm excited for split one, major one. But before we get into that, we got to talk about Carmi Corp completing the triple crown. Should they be favored against the rest of the field in Copenhagen? I mean, absolutely. How could they not be? They've been at, uh, they've been totally dominant in what I think is, you know, probably the strongest region, at least the strongest, like, top three or four teams um, in the world. Um, obviously, there's some argument to be made for G2, maybe, and there are some other great um, squads around the world with Fury and Falcons and whatnot, but um, they don't have to face teams like BDS and Gentle Mates and Vitality and Oxygen and Magnifico, and the list goes on and on, right? I mean, we got teams like Top Cougars taking uh, taking matches off these squads, so... Army Corps being able to go three for three, in my opinion, is just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so honestly, incredibly impressive. It kind of looked like maybe the other French teams would get closer because they're yeah. constantly in competition with this Carmine Corp squad, but the opposite happened. Yeah. Carmine Corp just established themselves as the as the best French team and as the best team in Europe and maybe the best team in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think... Right now, given that the previous best team in the world that hasn't changed their roster at all resides in the same region as them, and they look sizably better, I think it's fair to call them the best team in the world. I know that we haven't seen them against other competition. But also, if you have two eyes that work uh, and you watch them play, they're the best team in the world. Yeah. I mean, the way that they play off each other, all of them work off ball, all of them are, none of them are, are trying to steal the show. The fake aerials, the demos, Man. the bumps, the boost deals. It feels like every, you know, in, you know, we had this period of time, maybe two to three years ago, where everyone really had a defined role on a team. And now yeah. that, that started to break down. And I feel like, you know, in sports, sometimes we talk about like positionless basketball, for example, mm-hmm. or like, you know, in so- I know in soccer, there's been formations where like the midfield and the defense and they all kind of move around and they become hybrids. And it feels like Carmen Corp are playing positionless Rocket League. Where nobody, you know, maybe one person is a little more, uh, like, for example, Atal is just naturally more of a first man, but he's still doing third man stuff and second yeah, man absolutely. stuff. And it, it feels like we're, because they're so talented, instead of just relying on their talent in a way of, oh, we can do lots of fun mechy stuff, it's that they're using their talent to be able to fill in the exact role that's, that's needed at any exact moment in any game in any series. And they um, definitely have different roles because I don't know if you saw the whiteboard from Farah. Yes. With all the players and all like points, it's bullet points after bullet points. Uh, they're really working out a game plan that works specifically for their team, not just yeah. how to play Rocket League, but how to play Carmin Corp Rocket League. And that's what makes them so dominant right now. They, they play their own thing, they play at w- their own strength, and it's working out amazingly well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the thing that I'm most excited to see from them is like, they're three of the best talents in the world. I mean, I think most people, you know, at the moment, they'd probably all be ranked somewhere in the top 10, maybe top 15 in the world. But mm-hmm. like you said, Michael, they don't they don't play flashy ball. And it's not to me, it's not to say that they can't. Like, they definitely hit some highlight clips every now and then. But it but comes within the flow of the game. That's like, right. It's, it's not, like, you know. it's the optimal choice. It's never any forced, you know, um, individual plays. And there are so many times, like we, on Mondays on my stream, we always review the like the the best clips and stuff from the weekend and there are it seems like every single eu event there is plays where rise or vatira or ato they have an option but they end up foregoing that option and and going to bump and leaving the ball for a teammate or you know a slow play to absorb a 50 50 to the proper place where their teammates waiting it's so or or, you know and that's just an attack on in defense as well you know that they're willing to you know, semi dive to make that second challenge a little bit easier. It's just incredibly um, selfless ball. It's really what it is. It's selfless yeah. ball, and I and I, I think that is something that you don't historically we haven't always seen from those like incredibly highly talented teams. Yeah, um, understandably so. They want to show off what they can do and and try to exercise that mechanical prowess and advantage that they have over their opponents. Uh, but I think, like you just said, Michael. They and Carmen Court lets it happen organically, lets it happen naturally instead of trying to force it. And man, 
They are they are I, difficult yeah. to break down. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing to win, not playing to score, That's but right. they're playing to win. Yeah. And yeah. I feel strengthened in what I said last week about how they're such a calm and confident team when they when oh, they're yeah. playing and still maintain the the fire in them, the spirit to go for every game win. Mm. And and that's what what's getting them the the triple crown. Yep. I think uh, one thing I I, I just want to add is I think what I've enjoyed watching so much is it feels like a you no know, obviously Batir and Rise teamed before to much like to ton of success and Atau has had a lot of success uh, on his own, but it feels like these three players specifically and I feel this way about Daniel in North America as well have matured a lot. Yeah. Uh, not just in their game and rounding out their game to be more complete players, but mentally. Mm-hmm. I think in the past, Vatiro specifically, he is so passionate and he loves yeah. the game and loves to win so much that you could almost sometimes see series slip away from him because he was so emotional, right? And it would start to cloud like his judgment. And now, yeah. you know, it's probably due to the fact that he has teammates that he has, probably the fact that, you know, partly in, 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 in uh, fact of Farah being his coach. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously him growing up and, and, and really working on that too, he feels so much more collected. It's not, you don't see him pop off as much after they win, but you don't see him sure. down when they lose. You don't see him rattled. I mean, you remember against Furia, it looked like he missed a wide open save that cost them the series. I don't think this Vatira would ever do that. That's just another day of work for him. And right. I think that's something that's actually been very, hasn't really been talked about, yeah. but it's very evident. And I think it's something that's making them better is that lack of, emotional swing that they're just sure. locked in at all times like, again yeah. well i think that there's a, a a level of maturation that comes with experience right like he's he's felt those lows and he's felt like yeah. what the result of that is and so he's learned from it and progressed forward as a competitor and he you know maybe he understands now like i'm going to use this passion in these areas but mm-hmm. i have it a little bit under my thumb in these areas and he's a little bit more collected and, and calm and with that let's go ahead and bounce to our next topic of vitality um you know, in recent times, this specific roster has found a ton of success. And so now they are starting to have a little bit. It's so crazy, too, because the lowest that they place is top eight. And we're talking about like slip up. So, you know, it just kind of puts it into perspective how incredible they are. But, um, but they shouldn't be shakier... fighting for the top two seeds coming into yeah. the major. And they're not in those top two seeds. So it's still not really the level that they should be playing at. Right. But, um, you saw them bounce a little bit here. I think they looked better than they did in the previous two events, and obviously the result indicates that. But it does still look like they are second to KC, and they didn't match up against BDS, but I would even say just at the eye test, I would say third yeah. to BDS. BDS looks yeah. a little bit cleaner to me. Um, so, I mean, I, I think Vitality, um, they look better. Hopefully they continue to regain confidence, but at the moment it just feels like it's the KC show. Yeah, I'll have yeah. a little bit more to say about uh, Vitality in, in our next segment, but yeah, it's just not the mm. top team to beat from Europe, and sure. it, it's not really how we were looking at them at the start of this That's season. Right. So yeah, let's see what they can do at, uh, in Copenhagen, but yeah. Do I, do I smell an upset, upset alert from Jens coming later? I don't know. Say that again? I think I smell an upset alert coming from Jens. Upset a alert. Later on. <laughs> um, well, we'll see. We'll see in uh, double down. Oh. Um, we'll be all right. So, down. gentlemates, um, and we'll, I mean, uh, if you're for some reason watching this podcast and don't know the four teams from Europe that are going, are the four French or Francophone teams, gentlemates, BDS, Vitality, and Carmi Corp. Um, to no surprise, I think after that first event, we saw an incredible level in that top four. Things kind of eased up a little bit for a couple of the teams throughout events two and three, but they definitely seem like the most consistent teams and the highest ceiling squads as well for Europe. So I think that's, you know, undoubtedly Europe sending their best four squads. But Gentlemates, um, they look to be the most inconsistent of those teams, those four squads. And I think uh, they kind of took us on a roller coaster because I think at the beginning, and all three of us, I think were similar where we were like, we th- we believe that this team can be really really solid but will they be right like there's a different swing they can and they will and i think in that first event we were like oh okay well we're sold they're they're rocking they're way better than we expected i'm excited for this and then in event two and event three we start to kind of furrow our eyebrows a little bit uh maybe not so 
what is um what is you guys' opinions on this gentleman squad? Do you think they're just still working out um play style maybe? Do you think it's just the stiff competition in Europe that is, uh, you know, occasionally having them drop a series or two. What do you think is going on there with gentle mates? I think, um, I think they're a little bit, I think they're, they're getting a lot of heat right now because they just haven't looked great in the last two, but they're still made top eight. They've only really lost to, I mean, in bracket, they've only lost to yeah. other teams that made the major. Yeah. However, I will say, I think um, if I had to pick a team from Europe to kind of throw off the European dominance, it's not even close to them. If I, I notice, I guess, and I don't know what goes behind goes on behind the scenes and, and what they're into trying to do, but it feels like Seiko is almost being like he's being held back a bit. Like I think mm-hmm. that if you have a guy, he's a generational star. He's won four regionals. He's made two land final, three land finals. He's a world champion, and it doesn't feel like it feels like if you have that type of player on your team, you should be doing everything you can to enable him to be the best version of himself. And I think. He's proven so many times that he is that guy, even in the past year, making back-to-back land finals, that I would like to see him involved a little more. I think it makes them vulnerable because they don't have, without him, you're relying a lot on Juicy, who is very young and, for that reason, hasn't rounded out his game the way that other top European players have. Um, and while he may probably get there, you know, you want to feature Seiko a little bit more. I think I don't have huge expectations for them, uh, you know, compared to the rest of the European teams. Like, I still think that they're a strong sure. favorite to make the playoff bracket, potentially make top four, but I certainly can't see them making the grand finals. And I think they're far closer to the Furia, Falcons, and a sort of tier that people have been grouping them in, as opposed to the Vitality, who did look better than BDS all weekend this weekend, I will say. They made the final, they played Carmen closer, and they went perfect in Swiss. Um... And I would also say BDS over the two regionals they played really well in and almost beat Carmen have showed a lot more. So I think that they're clearly the uh, vulnerable European team. And I, I don't think- know if I agree with that. I think they could place lower than, or they could place higher than Vitality. Really? Because realistically, their wins, yeah, their losses, I mean, they haven't, uh, they have a few more losses on their record than Vitality, but not two terrible teams. They've lost most recently to BDS, obviously, but they've also lost to Moist. And then again, BDS, another Oxygen in there. Uh, and then twice to KC, only in Regional 1, in double elimination, they lost to Endpoint, um, which I would consider a weaker team than than those others. So their wins uh, are good. Their losses aren't that bad. I don't, I don't think they are so far away from a team like Vitality. If you just yeah. look at the European... Uh, seedings going into the major i don't see them below vitality the Ma- well i can see them above vitality let, let sure me I, I think that's totally fair vitality probably has a little bit more like leeway because we've seen how good they can be you know i think that's yeah that's but then they lose to from. sir and then i know, you know i know at 100 percent throws throws a whole different yeah well, so, level so giant then. killers yeah, you know, that's like true. They beat Carmen. Like that's a <laughs> I mean, regional two size is a quality loss. <laughs> you know, but I was gonna say for me it's form based, where they got swept by a BDS that did not look like the BDS we saw the rest of the the rest of the split. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. and the vitality they beat, the vitality that played this weekend looked a lot better than that vitality that they beat. So for me, I'm I am being recency biased, but that's because the tournament is closer than it was a month yeah. ago. And to me, Vitality looked like they have gotten better. I think they played better Rocket League. I know they had a, some really, really bad moments in that final, but I think leading up to it, they had, they had some. They played some really, really good Rocket League. And I think Gentlemates have been, you know, I hate to use the word, but it almost felt like they were being, you know, figured out the longer they were playing, where it felt like they were having a tougher and tougher time beating teams the longer the split went on. That's interesting because that's how I look at Vitality. I think they play a play style that is figured out by a lot of teams and but only a lot one of, teams... of them have zen and that's enough for me to put <laughs> if i tell you okay. i know i keep saying it but like okay. i'm just gonna keep saying it, it sucks like, but I'm it's sorry. actually a valid like rebuttal <laughs> yeah like... i there's not much i can say against yeah. that other than that it might provide more pressure on them as well to actually yeah. make it whereas uh, gentlemates come in as the fourth seed from europe as a team that has a little bit less to prove in Copenhagen, so they might upset a little bit. 
But can he do it in Copenhagen? That's all I got to yeah. say. Can he do it in Copenhagen? We'll find out. BDS, our final team to discuss uh, from the four representing Europe, failed to challenge Carmen Corp the same way that they did in open qualifiers one and two. Is it cause for concern or is it just simply an off event? Um, I, I'll say this. I think their Swiss stage was obviously a little bit weaker than um, some of their prior events. But I like, you know, praise to the teams that cleanly walk through Swiss 3 3 1. But I, I don't know. I just don't really find it that big of an issue. Like, I think as no. long as you're, as long as you're trucking your way through and you make it through, whether it's round five or round three, I'm not going to hold that against teams uh, too much. I think it's more important how you play once you get to that top eight. Swiss is a, I mean, it's a gauntlet. It's tough. It's a, it's a mentally taxing thing. But my opinion is that, um, I think KC just cleaned up is what I really think. I think they just got more, um, well, yeah, just cleaner Rocket League. Not, and, and I'm not saying that they were poor in event one and two, but they let BDS go out to a 3-0 lead. And I don't think that KC team that we saw this weekend, you know, I don't think that they would do that. I think they would yeah. put their but did foot you down see, beforehand. Did you see how they played? Did you see how BDS yeah. played against Carmen Corp? They looked scared. Yeah, Monkey Moon yeah. looks a little mental, mental blocky. I don't they know, did. It's like another hyperbole. They they tried to but... play the entire series as if they are playing from behind, and they were playing from behind a lot. But even when they weren't, um, they played like they had to force something out of Core right. because they were scared. Yeah, they played scared, and then you can't win like that. You have to, even with such a strong and dominant team like Carmicorp, you have to go into the series believing that you can win and I don't know if they did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I no cause for concern to me because I think we've seen BDS struggle online and just show up and clean up at land. And I've I've we've seen BDS look amazing online and then 06 out to my you know expanding region. Yeah, yeah. So Monkey Moon is an enigma that you know we can't really solve his his translations between online. Like he won two regionals Came second, went 06 of the land, and won the world championship. So it's kind of hard to like gauge what's going on there. Yeah. Um, I would say the talent level that BDS has shown and their the intention that they normally play with, which is to squeeze you, pressure you, and yeah. ultimately just dominate the, the midfield. Um, I think Carmen Corp is a special case where they're the only team that's really done that better. Um, so I still don't feel comfortable picking anybody over them uh, outside of Carmen Corp. Um, but I think that speaks more to the fact that they, a, a monkey moon team, the monkey moon team of whatever it is, has proven to always be a serious threat, yeah. a real serious threat uh, to everybody else, but the best clear cut best team in the world. Like they 4 1 Vitality in Boston, they 4 1 Carmine at Worlds. Like this is a, these are like, I, I can't count him out and I won't until I see it. Uh, so I'm going to say I think they're still number two in yeah. the world, no question. I wonder what they think of a team like G2, because if if str scrims don't go that well for BDS and they get into the tournament matchup against G2 and they look scared the same way they do against KC, then it might just be an issue of not being able to beat teams that they believe are better than know. them, right? Right. I don't so, think, yeah, they're but they're still North such American a solid team, so. team that they they are able to beat most by far most teams at the major. It's yeah. just going to come down to those you know high stakes matchups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen though because I genuinely don't think that any European would ever admit that a North American. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, with that. I I well, like they can lose eight zero and be like they're not going to do that in tournament. Like, well, I mean, we've we've kind of got like if we really read into it, we've kind of got evidence to that because like the first couple of events. They challenged them just fine. And then after, you know, struggling to take down KC, it seems like that's kind of when yeah. that different mentality started to happen. And, and G2 yeah. hasn't proved that yet. So I, I, I agree. And, and like Michael said, I, I think Europe is pretty confident that they're the, uh, they especially the French, the top teams, which it, unfortunately they should be confident. So yeah, let's uh, keep rolling here. French four punch their ticket to land. Will, the, uh, will EU be the top four on land? No, no, but mostly because of Swiss. Um, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge believer in gentlemates. Um, I think that their play style specifically leaves a lot to be desired, especially against a team like Furia or like Falcons. Uh, but I think the other three, I know Jens is, a little, is obviously lower on vitality than I am. I would, I would pick the other three to make 
uh, the top three and then maybe like a, a, mm. an NA team or somewhere else, um, okay. provided they don't bottle Swiss and then yeah. like end up on the same side of the bracket, which apparently is still means that you use better, but they just happen to end up on the same side of the bracket. Nothing course, to do with Asians, of course. Um, but yeah, maybe that'll happen. But for me, I see, um, I, I really do believe that it's going to be like Vitality G2 is the four or five seeds uh, in that quarterfinal. And I would feel better about Vitality winning that series. I think Carmen and BDS will beat whoever they play in the first round. Uh, oh, sorry, in the quarterfinal. And then, uh, you know, if the last one is like Gentle Mates Gen G or Gentle Mates Furia, I'd probably pick the team that isn't Gentle Mates. So. If, yeah. if only the tournament goes, you know, as we expect it to, yeah. which, which typically won't happen. isn't the case for Rob Will not. <laughs> not for. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, though. I mean, with this structure and, and with the format they're playing, it's going to be very difficult for all four European teams to be in the top four. Um, and yeah, but even I'll then, say this, I, think... I don't even, even if it wasn't a structure thing, I don't know. I still don't know that I would yeah, predict that, exactly. you know, I think there's plenty of incredible competition that's going to show up and for all four of them to, to reach top four, I think it would take near ceiling performances for, for each and every team. So, and you know that G2 has been preparing for the EU teams for weeks and yeah. the same can be said about Falcons and Furia. Right. So th there's definitely and more to say about the other regions. Yeah. Gen G. Um, made a late search. Genji is in the mix. Complexity, now. Oh, you know. Oh, you, you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, even if it would play out in a way that all four teams from Europe can make that semi those semifinals, I don't know. I, I wouldn't uh, yeah. put my hands into, into the fire for it. Yeah, I'm the same. Well, let's take a look back at Europe, at the teams that are not going to be going to Copenhagen. We've got squads like Moist, Oxygen, Magnifico, and of course, there are more team three endpoint. Shout out to Fast Forward and Cougars. Cougars, that's right. Top Cougars. They got hardest Swiss start. run I've ever seen. They played like that, every that team was, that was like in contention for land. I don't know that was how a, that happened. A, a miserably difficult run. Extremely unlucky, especially with the fact that they started out beating two of those top five teams, and then unfortunately being reverse swept out of the Swiss. But that's how it yeah, goes. Yeah, going to game so five what, and winning against Complexity and BDS, and then getting swept. <laughs> by Vitality and Gentlemates to lose yeah. in round five, game five against Oxygen. That is incredible. Oski diff, unfortunately. It was tough. It was tough. And you know, I mean, it's got to be draining too. Every series that you drop is just so difficult to stay on top of it. But again, a big shout to Top Cougars as well. Like you said, Michael, they're a squad that, I, like I said, I think they arrived late to the party. Missing event one, I think, was a big fluke. That's a solid team that I don't think will miss another event. But for all these teams that are staying home, what do we anticipate? We've got a trade window coming up after the major. Do we think that we're going to see some shuffling going on? I, I'll say this. I think shuffling typically happens top down. Yeah. And I feel as though those top four teams are either A, not going to make changes, or B, if they do, it's going to be intermingling. Yeah. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think anybody's going to dip out of there, and I don't think anybody from outside of there will be able to pull down, obviously. So... For the teams that are left at home, what do you guys make uh, of this trade window? Um, so I feel like it's, once again, we have to say, me and Jens, I know we're associated with Shift. We know literally nothing. Um, this is well, all speculation. Well, if, Jens if will news comes know, in, I will, will know, know, but there's no, there's no news. There's it's no really news. As of early. now, you're, ac you're actually in the dark. You don't know. Go yeah. on record of saying, yeah. But yeah. to me, the two that I look at, uh, two players I look at, because like, it's not just a play style thing or like they just happen to be born in a Francophone country. Like the talent is so consolidated. Yeah. But there's two players that I look at, I think everyone looks at when they look at outside of the top four uh, as the sort of cream of the crop. And that's Oski and Joyo. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if they're going to because both their orgs covet them so much and rightfully yeah, yeah. so. I think that's probably the most, the move that would most shake up Europe. Um, but outside of that, one of the interesting things about Europe is that there's not that many orgs. So that means all these right. players are kind of free to move free. around. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at players that sort of showed something uh, that may not have been names earlier this year. I'm thinking about Toxic. I'm thinking about Tech Oz. I know uh, Sa has officially gone LF1, so it'll be interesting to see what's going on with that. I we, I'm looking we, at these. We've right also now. got a Chronic, a Chronic floating chronic, around. Yeah. He's, he's waiting in the he's waiting in the wings. Yep, um, yep. So, and I, I will say, I think if a Chronic has remained at his level. I think that's another player who could be a game changer for a team because yeah. he has shown to be a phenomenal. Um, but I, so I think the big, the only, the, if Oski and Joya were to team wherever that was, 
that would be, I think, the one that people would be like, okay, now there's another team that like really yeah. can go and like get to a final, win regional, stuff like that. But yeah. outside of that, I think you're going to be seeing, and it'll be cool, hopefully, to see a lot of these young and uh, young up and coming players who just made a name for themselves, mm-hmm. kind of consolidate each other and start that next yeah. wave. Specifically in the UK, I feel like the UK had a little bit of a moment, uh, maybe not at the top, but around that like the up and coming, the up next or next up, sorry, if you will. Um, where a lot of these young UK players, Spanish players, were kind of showing that they had something in the tank. Um, I think that's probably the the most interesting thing about Europe, but mm-hmm. I have to see how it shakes out. Yeah, we have some Spanish Fury, of course, on Magnifico. I mean, there's also Ryan Wild. Those players, they can change teams very quickly, very suddenly. Uh, so if, if they do, no clue yet, um, right. but it can just happen out of nowhere. It does yeah, sometimes. I, I feel pretty similar. It, it does just feel like, it almost feels like there's like levels and like that top level is not going to trade with anybody except that top level. feels like there's a mid-level and I think you're, you, you've nailed it. Like those two big pieces in that mid-level, Joyo Oski, but there's also that extra layer where it doesn't feel like those orgs want to let those players go. So and why would it's probably going to be yeah. remaining at those orgs. And then there's no. that lower level, which I think you're right is going to shuffle big time, um, which is exciting to see those players continue to try out different team comps, what works, what team environment do I fit best in, who, who, you know, whose talents around me bring out the best in me. So I'm excited to see that because there is, I know it's hard to look at that level when you see the very top four and how impressive they are, but there's actually a lot of really, really talented upcoming players. I'm a big oh, fan man. of Emil Bald over on Wild as well, Tempo. You got Temper and Hyder, who's been around for a while, but is balling out. I mean, yep. Hyder's going crazy. Yeah, um, I'm excited also, about Eugene. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Eugene, but he is, with nice. Yeah. Eugene that dude, is nice. Yeah, like, dude. I, I hosted a show match between him and Emil, and they are both like gross mechanically. I mean, they are filthy what they uh, what they can do with their car. So, yeah, there's a lot of talent floating around, and then of course all of Top Cougars, I think, are kind of on the cusp. We saw Resolve have a, a lackluster split, and I think that's a, a talented team as well. So, yeah, top, second, probably not going to be a lot of movement, but that third level, and that third level could shake things up. You never know. Yeah. Uh, you know, the proper team strikes, and they might go on a big run like uh, Hogan Mode or something. Yeah, and now would be a good time to remind everyone that roster moves are generally made because of factors outside of yeah. gameplay. Yeah. Of course, gameplay can be important, but generally what we've seen in the past I don't know, five, six years, mm-hmm. almost okay. every time yeah. it's because of outside reasons, but because of team environment, it's yeah. because of how much time people can actually spend playing and practicing and scrimming and everything. Um, it's about personalities. It's yeah. about anything except for gameplay sometimes. Well, I mean, so, let's, let's also, everybody take a moment to think back and reflect when you are 13 to 22, like there are certain people that you like being around and others that yeah. you don't really like being around. And when you make this your job and you're spending multiple hours every day with these people, it makes sense that you'd want to line up with a personality and environment yeah. that fits. Yeah, you fits saw it in needs, the, so. the shift interview with Speed from last week where he said that basically let it shine through that it wasn't his decision um, to get uh, Ronicky uh, on the team. Uh, which he does not have Back a good team connection with on, yeah. on Team Liquid. Yeah. Um, and it kind of backfired Shelly. for the organization yeah. because player-wise, it seemed like a great move. But if you actually look at how the players want to play, practice, especially a player like Speed, really needs to have an environment that he feels comfortable in. And that wasn't the case with Ronicky on the team. And then the team just kind of doesn't do very well anymore. Yeah. It's important. It's important. And, and like you said, it's not something that we're ever going to be, be able to see or know about. So um, with that said, that's going to close up the recap for the Open Qualifier 3 in Europe, which closes out split number one for all regions. As I said at the top of the show, we'll be heading to Copenhagen in two and a half weeks. So not too long. Yeah, it's super quick turnaround. Yeah. All right. So here we go. We got our segment doubled down. This is a piece of the show where we're going to make a bold prediction for the major, and obviously we'll follow up uh, here on the podcast after the major ends to check in and see how uh, accurate or inaccurate we were with our bold takes. Is anybody 
ready to go? If not, I can lead the way. I mean, I already kind of talked about a little, okay, a little let's hear it. tiny bit. Um, go ahead. Yeah. It's a bold prediction time, isn't it? It so is. So I will go for a properly bold prediction. Okay. And I don't like it. Because oh, no. I like the players, I like the team. It's the first yeah. esports decal I bought this season. And I still use it. But my bold prediction is that Team Vitality will not make the playoffs. Oh, that is bold, isn't it? That is a bold yes. one. That is bold. I love that. That is, a that bold, is bold. And I, like I do that, believe that they have not improved enough this split. And that they were a team that in Europe was pretty much figured out. And if the European teams can figure it out, I think more teams can figure it out because they've been together for a while. They haven't made a change in the off season. Um, and they haven't looked comfortable in their own region. Uh, I know Europe is strong and they can still beat a lot of other teams and definitely, obviously, definitely can make it out of Swiss. But my bold prediction is that they're just going to get some unlucky matchups. Mm. Uh, they're playing complexity first round, I believe, which is already kind of tough uh, yeah. for a first round yeah, matchup. Not a gimme at all. Yeah. So my bold prediction is that they're not going to have that top eight placements. Mm. Okay. Not even the last seed in Europe, I know, but Oof, I don't, keep, I, they keep they keep down. I can't believe in in their play can, right can now. He, can he do it at Copenhagen? We'll find can he out. Make bracket. How far <laughs> we've fallen? It, we went from can he win five events, events in a row to can he make bracket? I like that though. That's a bold yeah. prediction. It's bold. bold. I, I know. I think it's reasonable though. I could see it happening. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say for me, this is not double down. This is quadruple down because I'm doubling down on Gen G Mobile One Racing to be there we the go highest again. placing North American team mm. and make the final at Copenhagen. And I'll tell hey. you why. Is because something clicked. Something like that last that last regional, and they looked clear. Now, did G two look like they were before? No. But how much was that of you know the you know first of all the excellence of Lion Blaze, and the and second of all the just absolute pressure that first killer puts on you and App Jack puts on you. <clears throat> then you got Chronic making plays outside of it. I think that this team is the best team outside of Europe, and in terms of how they're equipped to handle Europe. Because they have a play style that does not rely on mechanics and instead relies on the fundamentals of the game, but also has that second gear they can get to. And last fall major, so the first major, we saw a first killer led team take on a team that looked absolutely unbeatable in the quarterfinal, Oxygen, at the time with Joris, Archie, and Oli. Oli. And he just put them on a poster for about 35 minutes straight. Yeah. And I think that when. It doesn't matter how bad they look the first two uh, open qualifiers. It doesn't matter how bad they look in Swiss. It doesn't matter if it's Carmen Core playing them. Nobody wants to play this team because they know not only can they play a sound series, but they've got a nuclear weapon on their side. And I'm taking them to go far, and I'm taking them to get all the way to the final, no matter who's there. I'm not going to predict them to win. That's a little too bold, a little too spicy. That's like the, the five jalapeno thing at the wing place, but I'm yeah. going for <laughs> Make the final. It's what pretty bold. After that's out of my. That's bold. Yeah, it's bold. We got to. Genji got to get Mike on the payroll, man. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, you're already paying content creators to just. Yeah. Do, so like, come on. I got to get Michael on the payroll. I got the, I got the color on. Kind of. All right. Um. I, so I, I okay. I I got to take here, and I'm not sure how bold it is, and it's really part of a like a, a larger piece. But I'll 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 kind of play to I think what the community believes at the moment. Um which I think will result in this being bold. But I'm going to say, I think uh, three NA teams will make bracket. Is that bold okay, or that no? Is, that's, that's bold. I don't think, bold? I think most people, if they have it in their predictions, it's like three, two, and they're playing power. And it's OG or LG there. Right, or, right. It's like a, or it's like a diehard Rattles fan. Which yeah, is like, I, I, think three, I think three NA teams make bracket. And I'll that's expand. Bold. I think it's going to be three. I think three Europe, and then I think Falcons Fury make bracket as well, and I think that's going to end up being our top okay. eight. Um, I don't have a ton of faith in APAC and Limitless, uh, or excuse me, Elevate and Limitless. Um, I would love to see one of those teams, you know, move forward into round four, and I think it's very possible. Even I, I think, I mean, potentially both of them, depending on who they match up against and how well they play. It's so hard to it's so hard to like properly gauge those teams when, like. 
we just don't know how we don't know how they're going to stack up against um, you know some of the top competition from other regions. But I think OCE is vulnerable. I know that Power dominated the region, but I'm not going to lie to you. That actually makes me feel a little more scared about OCE um, because like no one tested Power. At least it didn't yeah. seem that way. And the other teams um, in the region were just kind of all over the place. I mean, they were losing to yeah. some teams outside the top four. It was just really shaky. And so I, I you know, I know, you know, hats off to Power. Obviously, winning three regional straight is something to be praised. But um, you know, I, it doesn't. It, to me, it doesn't inspire like confidence for what they're going to bring to the table here. So, but then you know, outside of that, I, um, I I think that complexity will obviously be dangerous. I think rule one will be dangerous. But I have faith in, I have faith in you know one of those teams outside of Gen G and G two. I don't know which of the two between Luminosity and OG it will be, but I think one of them is going to scrape their way into that top eight as well, and we'll have a. Uh, like I said, three, three and three from NAEU, and then one and one from Mina and Sam. That's yeah. that's Maybe the totality of the take there. Maybe it's the three uh, jalapenos. Yeah, not but not it, too it's, bold, not crazy. It's still it's but, still bold. Yeah, I, I think it's, like I said, I think a lot of people are just uh, yeah. and understandably so. They don't have a lot of faith in the teams outside of those top two in NA to to advance in the bracket. So just for, look, first just three like, rounds, first three rounds of the Swiss being in studio. Yeah. Caters well to OG because you know when Kong gets to yell. <laughs> the Kong factor. Yeah, true, listen, actually. Yeah, it's, it's true. J, listen, OG sees Carmen Court. I'm not saying they're better, but J Naps has a little bit of, you know, a little bit of bragging rights over them from a while ago. Yeah. Tom already proven getting in Vatir and Rise's head. And Nolly has all their strats from when they played Atlanta together. So I'm saying, I'm not saying they're better. I'm just saying they're it's equipped to deal with up. it. It's kind yeah, of yeah, up. true. And they, none of them can do Dude, anything with the ball mechanically. Could you so imagine like, the scenes? <laughs> could you imagine the scenes if OG beats Carmen Corp? Twitter will be on fire. I will be right in the middle of the <laughs> 25 year old man beating the, beating <laughs> EU number one. Like, what is this? <laughs> uh, JNAP's owns. That's funny. I will be there. That is so funny. All right. Well, there's our double down. Y'all feel free to drop your takes as well in the comments below or. Jump in shift cord and drop your take there. Uh, the link to join that Discord will be below in the description as well. Let's jump to Major One Preview Swiss Round One Predictions. Uh, we could just run through it, and all three of us can give our take on it. We got Carmine versus Limitless. Rio. Sweet. Sweet. Nothing to talk about. Yeah. Okay. BDS versus Elevate. Sweet. Nothing to Sweet. talk about. Sweet. Okay. But it, well, real quick. Yeah. Pioneers are going to learn Sphinx's name this this land. Just know that. In that O2 round, Pioneers are going to learn Sphinx's name, and they're going to see a I, lot dude, on their screens. What, here's what I'm going to say. I think the whole world's going to learn Sphinx's name. Yeah. I, I really yeah. Especially that, uh, Scrub, Amphis, and, and yeah. Fiber. Oh, they're going to learn who's Sphinx. They're going to learn. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Okay, then we got G2 versus Pioneers. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. And and I do want to say this, too. That's no shade to those squads. Those are possibly the three best the teams comp. in the world at the moment, so... Yeah. That is, you know, teams. that's gonna be a, yeah. that's a tough first round match. It's just a first round. They get more chances yeah. at later on. That's right. So then we got Vitality versus Complexity. Vitality not being as consistent, certainly not dominant. Can Complexity get revenge for Boston? They've obviously added the new piece in Dorito, and while they had a good start to their split, winning that first event in Sam, they haven't been able to topple Furia again in bracket, um, in final specifically. Do we think that they've got what it takes to take down Vitality here, or? Maybe we just see a competitive match. I mean, I kind of have to go with my bold take and, and <laughs> yeah, say yeah. that Complexity can take it. And yeah, I, yeah. I do think they can. Yeah, I think so too. They, I'd still consider them the underdog in the, in the yeah. matchup. Yeah. Vitality should be taking this. Yeah. I, I think um, you're right. I think it is an upset, and I'm not going to call for the upset just yet. I do think Vitality will get the better of Complexity there. That's so, fair. I think, here's my take on Complexity. Uh, I was speaking to Hootie before we got on. Complexity is what I define as a silly team, which is that they have all the pieces to be very good, but they keep doing silly things that keeps them away, specifically last season. So maybe this new season is different because they added Dorito. The problem is, is that Dorito played for G1 last year. Silly team. So it's hard for me to believe that a silly team can pull this off because I am just getting flashbacks of them going up 2-1 and being in overtime and having a wide open net. And doing a silly team moment, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to take Vitality. It's going to be quite close, uh, just because I think CRR and, and Rays will have a lot of confidence against them. Like, yeah. hey, we were on the ropes, and we, we had them on the ropes, and you know, one shot goes our way, 
and we, we beat them. And that was when they were amazing. That's when they were the best team in the world. Now they're looking right. vulnerable. But I will say, I do predict some silly team activities from, from Complexity. Until they silly show me team different, activities. I, I like that. All right, it's let's bounce to the next one. one. The Gingy. Two... Sorry, go ahead. It's definitely one of the top two series yeah. to watch in the first, first round. 100%. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the number one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. All right. So Gingy versus Power. I'm going Gingy 3 1. Uh, like I said, I, I, I have not, and I would love to be wrong. I would always love to see OCE perform uh, better than what what we anticipate but yeah i think uh i think Gingy's gonna handle it i like the here. three one take but i think a sweep is more likely mm, okay um so I, it'll be interesting to see because <clears throat> first killers teams uh you know kind of historically have always been kind of shaky on day one and they they write the ship and then and that plays them pretty well um they did let apac i mean he let apac take game off him uh, yeah. back in the day uh, which is, I always think it's funny that Apex like has a game off first killer, has a game off Zen, but like can't make bracket. Um, I think I would say um, I'm gonna take Genji here three zero because I think this Genji is a very serious team who takes their practice very seriously, and I think that they're rolling off a lot of momentum, and that's just not what you want to see. If you're a uh, expand expansion region team you want to catch a team that maybe isn't doing as well because that maybe they're kind of not doing well with scrims and then you can just kind of exploit that that weakness uh, i don't think the gen is going to have that weakness going into this tournament well let's take a look at our final match here or actually that's not our final match is it we've got a couple more um mates versus rule one can rule one capitalize on general mates recent struggles it's time that's a tough one i don't know it's i so mean I'm, I'm leaning towards gentle mates uh, Nupo yeah. Ball is here. Nupo but, Ball yeah. is here. I said last week that this land was about Nupo showing everybody that yeah. he is as good as anyone in the world, and he's going to put everyone on notice out of the gate. Rule one, three, two, Ooh. Nupo. Hey, just master class. Just, and you know what? Maybe, you know, this could be an opposite thing where you know how I said that BDS won't, like, no European will admit that a non European is better than them. Maybe they'll come in saying Ahmed Khalid. They're, they're yesterday's news. Yeah, this they're new kid. Yeah, he's never even played on land news. before. And then all of a sudden, he's sippy glue, double tap, passing it down to Ahmad, who's slotting it top right. And oh my goodness, we're on our back foot. And then all of a sudden, everybody's tweeting, Nupo, man. Like, I knew he was yeah. good, but oh my God. It might be Nupo time. Um, but I can also see a world where they lose in the close series to Gentlemates. Yeah. Uh, because Gentlemates is just still a strong team from from a strong region um but but i can see them going far in the bracket afterwards because if they get to say game five they'll have a much easier matchup in round two than a lot of the teams that yeah. will maybe get swept or three one or whatever uh yeah i'm going i'm going mates here um rule one obviously is the definitive second best team for mina but we have seen first and foremost they just really haven't threatened Falcons much. There's that one game seven um, grand finals in event two. But other than that, um, I haven't been super impressed. They've even dropped a couple series um, throughout the event to, or I think maybe just one series to a team outside of Falcons. But they have played some close series with Twisted Minds. Um, so yeah, I, I think, and, and this is the tough thing about the emerging regions is like, you, you, like we're just reading into things that may not mean anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like playing a, a close series of so Twisted Minds may not really indicate much at all. Maybe it's just Twisted Minds had a couple good wins and that's what it was. But, you know, if Rule 1 was totally dominant and they were playing Falcons closer consistently, then I would have more faith. So, yeah, for now, I think I'm going to go with Gentlemates. Our next match, we've got Falcons OG. Um, I'm going to go Falcons here. I'm a Falcons believer. I'm a Fury believer. I think those are two squads that, they're 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 just they just have the curse of not being an NA and EU, and so they're going to have a little bit of doubt from just the wider general community. Um, and when I say doubt, I just mean like there's always hesitation to believe that they can be a top four, you know, a grand finals team. And it doesn't mean that there aren't people that believe. I'm not saying that, but there's always that little bit of like question mark, right? So, but I don't have that question mark for those two teams specifically. I think I think they're going to do phenomenal. I think when you perform so well in your own region, it just bolsters that confidence, and and you know. If I were a player on those teams, I would not care that I'm going to face new competition from around the world. I would just, you know, I would just have, I'd be walking around with utter confidence because I've, I've been so 
um, you know, performing so well in my home region. So I'm going Falcons here against OG. I, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I think Falcons will place higher than them. But, uh, as I said, Robert Kahn Kaiser, 11 and two all time in studio for a reason. Uh, it doesn't matter if they can't understand him that well. It's still I was about to say, maybe, um, maybe that's uh, just the, the advantage. It's just the tone. It's just the tone. <laughs> um, and uh, I think OG feel like a team that's going to start very strong because of their play style and because of the veteran leadership on the team. And I think that they're embracing an underdog role. I think that the Twins had a really fun time last year as the fun story, but now they're the, th they're the top dogs. They're expected to perform. And when they were expected to perform at Worlds, they struggled a bit. Now they do have a, a really, really high level third. So I don't really want to put too much talk into last season. But I think this is the type of series where a team that is going in saying, listen, no one thinks we're going to win. We got nothing to lose. Everyone's pencil on this team as a potential top four, top two team. Let's go. Let's play our game. We're not going to rely on mechanics, not even as a joke. And that actually is important because a lot of the times, um, the, like the mechanical ceiling for skill drops on land. And so if you don't rely on it as much, it actually can help you, especially early while everyone's still getting situated to setups and such. Um, so give me, give me OG three two. Um, I think they're gonna pull out some some big late late goals. Um, you know, Jay Naps, the kid, he just keeps doing it, and I think uh, him and Nolly, especially as a duo against this team, with with Calm kind of sniping that the Rawas counterattack ball. Um, I'm liking the matchup, and I think that they're gonna steal one here. Jens, I mean. I, w I would say Falcons are the favorites here. Yeah. Uh, they've looked so dominant in their own region, which is not a bad region at all. Yeah. Um, and OG are coming in with a little bit more of a question mark behind their name. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd have Falcons to take this just because they're coming off of a good split. And I think this round one is something they should take to show that they're all so good at land so yeah. and and yeah a com might be you know uh, only lost to Reddit, a factor uh, but then again they don't speak english that well so who knows i recall um i recall trk chirping a little bit at lands you know some yeah, true. You know, he's Sam, the Sam, the well. Sam teams will yell in. He can Brazilian do it. Yeah, yeah. Portuguese, so I think they they, they may Brazil. enjoy it and spit it right back. Yeah, they might. Um, they might all right, as well. well, let's bounce to our actual final series. There, we've got Luminosity Gaming versus Furia. Will LG's demo heavy style uh, stifle Furia and their speed? Thoughts, gentlemen. Three zero Furia. Furia, not we as Furia, sleep, but I, I'd say three one Furia. Yeah. I, I respect what Luminosity does, and I think they're going to prep hard for this, and they prep mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it's been a fun story, but they, Luminosity has not shown the ability to compete with the best teams in North America besides a few close games here and there that are, you know, sometimes used as, like, justification, like losing close games. I, I'm not a believer in losing close games. I think, you know, you can lose four games by one goal and you still got swept. A team beat you four times in a row. Uh, I think Furia play at a pace that will... I feel like Furia plays at a pace that, similar to how when LG plays G2, once G2 gets settled in, it looks like they can't keep up with them. Yeah. I think that's going to happen. So yeah. maybe not a sweep in the sense that maybe LG will snag the first game. But once Furia get rolling, um, I just think that that team... And I, I don't want to make this all about LG. I want to make this about Fury, actually. This team is so talented. Like, yeah. so ridiculously yeah, talented offensively that I just don't... I think there's going to be series similar to Carmen Corp, similar to G2, where they just... You just can't stop them because you're they're just a lot better than you. And that's okay. But, yeah. they're, like, Fury are so good. Yeah. So, the, the, hopium I'm for, the hopium for Luminosity is that, like you said, Michael, earlier on, that... On LAN, players are usually not as mechanical. Um, sure. So everyone falls down to kind of their base level, if you will. And yeah. Slater isn't that mechanical to begin with. That's not, you know, a shot at, at Rattles. That's just kind of how he plays. And he managed, he's shown it before, that he can keep up his level of mechanics, which then gets to a level that everyone's yeah. playing at. And suddenly, you know, he's a much better factor on his team. So... 
That's the uh, opium do... for Luminosity. But I think Furia are too strong for them to to show it against them. I do worry that that will backfire because of how much Cheese and Magic Bear rely offensively on their mechanics. And also, I think if one player has proved that his mechanics sometimes don't go down on LAN, it's Yan. Uh, you can ask uh, Vatira, yeah. Rise, and Joyo about that. And also yeah. all the teams that he farmed in the winter and spring. Absolutely. Um, so you that's kind of Yan is, Yeah. Yan is definitely a, a freak of nature mechanically. I I'll say this. I, I agree. I think Fury will take the series, but I actually feel like more hesitant to go with Furia here than the prior series of Falcons over OG. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, the, uh, you know, I rate, obviously they play very different, but I think that those two teams I, I rate similarly. But the thing that I know about LG is they are like very, very heavy into prep. Michael, you mentioned it as well. Um, they have Greg as a coach, but they also have Kevpert. I don't know how many people keep up with that, but Kevpert is... Um, so I, 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 when I got into my coaching journey, I got in through his org and I was helping coach like a second or third string team. And guys, like I, I'm not exaggerating. There are flow charts, like an unbelievable amount of information and study and research, you know, on game theory. And like, I, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that that's probably the most in-depth, like analytical line in the coaching world. Um, and I think. The fact that we've seen LG play some of these teams in quarterfinals close when it's they're not as good as G2. Like the players just aren't. And you know, for 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 them being able to keep things close because they do make that style messy, they will bump and demo you. The you know, they'll they're one of those teams that I think do a good job of like dragging their opponents down a little bit. Yeah. Um rather the than like trying to debuff. brute force and outplay. They'll make it messy. And and so I, I like I said, I, I do think that Fury will come out on top here, but I think LG could can definitely make the series a little little messy, kind of take uh, Furia out of their their sure. comfort zone for a little bit. But um, I'm with you guys. I think the the mechanical prowess and the speed that Furia can play at is is going to cause some some serious problems for this LG roster. If I'm Furia, I wouldn't scrim them once. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, you're getting no tape on me. Yeah, don't get. Yeah, you're get, right. Don't they they yeah. prep better than anyone probably, but Carmen Corp. And I'd be probably prep better than Carbon Car. Carbon Car just has insane talent. We'll never know. There's no way you're getting tape on me. Like, we're going to go yeah. into this blind because if I'm blind and you're blind, it's better than if we're both prepped. If, sure. if I'm playing Luminos. Sure. Well, don't forget, LG and OG, they might be using a grass boost, which could give them the edge that they need. I mean, I wonder if other teams will. Will use well, I didn't. I didn't see can't... it too. I didn't see it too much this weekend in Europe. No, not Wait at all. Wait till they scrim them. Wait till they scrim them, and they can't bump rattles, and rattles getting nine <laughs> demos a game. They're gonna start using it. Trust <laughs> That's me. That's funny. We'll see if the grass boost takes over. Well, let's jump to our next segment. Silence the doubters. We're all gonna predict a player or team that will silence the doubters in Copenhagen. Does anyone have one ready to rock right now? And once again, I've kind of mentioned it before. This time less explicit. I've heard too much doubt, even here on Shiftcast, mm. about Rule One. Mm, okay. Just because, I like that. just because Team Falcons have their number doesn't mean right. there's suddenly not a team that can compete at a major. Come on now, they're still they still a strong strong team, and they have Nupo. They do have Nupo. They have Nupo. Oh, just music to my ears, man. Music so... to my ears. I mean, if you can use, they have Zen as an argument. I can use. Absolutely. They have. And Nupo. I will not it's valid. argue back. It's I will valid. So argue back. I will Nupo say, Nation. I will, I will make a bold prediction out of it. I will just go double down. Um, <laughs> I will say they have a very good shot at making the brackets and going. They take a vitality spot. Yes or no? Well, that that might be a fun matchup in round five, if it comes to that. A, a Zen Nupo aura off for for top imagine, eight would be imagine. special special stuff that would be one to remember yeah um i'm gonna put on silence the doubters a player who has been silencing the doubters all split and he's gonna silence them for good and that's dan dan droid oh. listen i, I want to take you guys back on a little journey back to fall major 2020 2023 carmen court versus space station now mm -hmm. i watched this series as a diehard space station fan and I came out of it furious at Daniel. And he clipped on them like four times, even though he lost. And the reason why is because Daniel, uh, I think it was a moment where it felt like he had decided that he was the be-all and end-all.
and how to win that series. He was cutting his teammates off. He was stealing boosts. He was going for everything he could. And it was working sometimes, but it punished. He got punished for it a lot. I want to you know, come back to fast forward back to now. I don't see that out of Dan anymore. I think Dan's, uh, you know, he is a full, he puts full trust in his teammates. Yeah. I think he uh, plays, you know, we saw the slow transformation as a 1v1 player into Dan Droid, uh, who <laughs> plays a lot more fundamental instead of relying on his mechanics. And I think we've seen that now in 3v3, where he's a lot more, he's a lot more willing to take the 50 or make the pass or go for the boost deal instead of always waiting for the clip or the air dribble. And I think that is not only a better play style overall, but a far better play style on land. So I think personally that Daniel is going to show out on land. I think he's going to be the best player for G2. Here's another, I guess, small double down, a single down, if you will. Um, and I think he's going to show everybody that he is a new Dan and he is a much scarier, much more calculated and much colder Daniel come Copenhagen. Okay. I like that take. Um, I'm going to go with my take is the Elevate squad find themselves in round five. <laughs> okay. I really do. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've Bro, watched a lot, but I think that Vert and Realize have just had, a, they've had a chokehold on that region for a couple seasons now. And I think like for good reason. They're very good players. You know, Vert is, uh, you know, got a lot of his training has come up in Europe, which we all know has been a very successful region for a long time. I think he's um, also evolved his game. You know, he felt kind of one dimensional a, a, a while back. And, mm. and I think that he has evolved his game. And when he first got over there, I mean, it was really just unbelievable. Like the fantasy stats that he was putting up, right? Because he was just, he was just a different level. Mm. And um, I think, Realize is, you know, obviously an endemic player to the region, but I think he has also been a kind of a cut above the, the rest of the region for a while. And so those two alongside Max Yu, who has been in a, that top tier mix as well, um, you know, for them to fall multiple times to this newer, at least newer to me, elevate roster, um, that's inspired some confidence in me. And I think that that team, if you listen to those comms when they're, um, you know, winning, they're just having a good time. I feel like that's a squad that's not going to have a lot of pressure. I mean, how, you know, the APAC team never really does. Um, but I also think that they just have something that the past squads haven't. And I think that's just a little bit higher base level mechanics, which will bode well, you know, as far as keeping up with their teams, uh, excuse me, keeping up with their peers at, at the major. So now listen, it's going to take, it's going to take the right matchups falling. Yeah, but even then, who are they gonna going to beat? Because I can see them above uh, power, Limitless and, power, and Pioneers. Power maybe and power. there it is. Power and Pioneers. But that's, they're, they're that's gonna, three teams. Snag, they have to beat five. They're gonna snag Limitless in round three. Okay. And they're gonna snag Power in round four. Yeah. And then they find themselves in round five. I, I I'll set I'll set. <laughs> Listen, state, okay? I, like I said, it's gonna take the perfect matchup. Yeah. It's gonna take the perfect matchup. Power. But I, you know, power. And, and that's a that's a very specific take. But I think just in general, I think that APEC team. Um, elevate team is going to impress i mean we, there's a uh, let's just call it what it is there's a very general sentiment among the community that the, the limitless and um and elevate is just nowhere near the rest of the competition um and and i'm just going to be honest i do think that they are closer to that oce one and two than yeah. a lot of people would give them credit for now we'll see obviously that could be way off the oce teams could just rock their world we'll see but that's my take for for silence of doubters um come on sphinx come on kevin it. lct if bring it bring it home <laughs> If power can can get a classic first killer round one underperformance and sneak into that one oh and then catch a losing a team that lost a one and oh one in the one one round and that team that team loses and then lose I don't know limitless we'll into we'll power see. either way like we said earlier I do think that it's time for uh for for Sphinx to show the world what he's capable of and and that's where I, that's where I'm backing let's jump to speed taking. We've got yeah, some takes here off. that you all drop in the shift cord, and we are going to rate those takes or, or let you know if we agree or disagree. Um, well, why don't we do this? We'll switch it up. You guys throw it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'll yeah. start. I'll start Go with you. Go for it. All right. Um, Hootie, here's my, sure. here's my question for you. It's, okay. it's not a major question, but it's a question I think that you'll enjoy. 
The best three teams in the world that are not that do not have an org are Magnifico, Pirates on a Boat, and Redemption. No. Top Cougars. Dude, we're just on the same DC, page. baby. Got to Bro, the, the Cougars are, like I said, I really do think that that first um, regional was a huge fluke. Um, I've got a lot of faith in that team. Relating Wave is just forever underrated. I, I think Beast. he is a, a, such a solid player when you put him with like two talented pieces around him. Um, Redemption, I think, is a, a, almost like the, I think it's almost the inverse, where it's like top Cougars are greater than the sum of their parts. And I think Redemption, like individual parts, you know, you could argue that they should be performing better. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, people I'm had them as no like a there. fringe land. And Pirates on a Boat have definitely been impressive. I love that team. I think that's a really fun story. We all love to see a Chiefs find success as well. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I think that I would rate Top Cougars over both Redemption and uh, Pirates on a Boat, I think. Nice. All right, yes. No, 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 no. I have one for you. Okay, Ooh. damn. The, Michael, the peeps run at 3 Mac Montreal is the greatest underdog run in Rocket League history. Okay, so I'm going to say yes and no. I'm going to go fence Whoa, 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 whoa. What's no, no, that? Listen, no. Matt, can you hear me? Up? It's an up vote or a down vote. <laughs> okay, listen. The, for the level of the team that they was predetermined before, like that they were assumed, absolutely yes. There's never been a team that was like not even in the RLCS, I believe, at the time. That was the most under of dogs. Yeah, but in terms of like, like we're leaving this team to die, there were no expectations for them. In terms of like, a team with high expectations that looked dead in the water than one, it's still C9 at, at C9. Like, yeah. When C9 lost in that first round, everyone was like, classic NA online <laughs> merchants. Like, you know, like Squishy's never winning. Stop trying to do flip resets. Never going to work. Um, and then they they shocked the world and, and they took down the, the best team, you know, that a lot of people think the best team yeah. of all time relative to Arif. So I would say, like I said, I'm not saying yes and no in like the sense yeah, of like, Yeah, I know what you mean. But... Yes, they were the biggest underdog, but I think in terms of the context of the event, I still think C9 were the best, like, Cinderella run, if you say, if you will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me swing it to Jens real quick. Okay. Uh, Jens. Yeah. If Carmine Corp of 2021-22, so Nolly, Astral, and Itachi, yeah. beat BDS, the World Championship BDS, in Game 7 of their quarterfinal match, they would have gone on to win the World Championship. 2021-2022, the worst... I would say the worst grand finals we've had. Yeah. Yeah. Was that was G2 versus BDS. BDS won, but the, the people in the stadium were already leaving okay, to get to the car. I'm going to defend them. Everyone was so exhausted. Like, the uh, yeah, first, I know. I know. Dude, that's, day, okay. That's part of it, but it's also because we were getting absolutely slaughtered. Also, BDS, not a fun team to root for. They're just too good and they have no personality, or they had no personality. I, I, yeah, I it guess. wasn't the most fun, flashy Rocket League, but it was you know, definitely because we were getting smoked. And and every time it, it happened before and, and maybe it'll happen again. But when Americans get to their car to beat the beat the, the crowd, yeah. beat the traffic, uh, and not okay. watch until the winners, you know, get their trophy. That's that's a big no no. But this time, this one time, you get away with it because that was the worst. That was just I wanted to turn it off. I watched it out of <laughs> kind of like I felt like I had to, uh, but like it was yeah, more an obligation that I actually enjoyed the game. So uh, it's just it was such a weak grand final for the teams that they were because yeah. they weren't yeah. bad teams. It wasn't that the teams were weak. It was that the, they were the two best. The gameplay was. Um, well, so if Carmen Corp would have beat BDS, oh, they would have had to play Furia, Furia in the semifinal, and then G2. Yeah, in the final. yeah. I mean, it is a land team with Astral on it. Can't can't deny can't deny the astral land, land buff. Um, no, BDS was still just too solid. Um, but if they if they had beaten, damn, it's tough. <laughs> that is. Um, I'm sorry, if, they're not going down to they're not going down to the fury, and Astral's not like just completely checking out. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'll, I'll if if they there. still have the land buff going on, yes. Yes, they would have because G two, they were tired, they were done, they were checked out, and they couldn't put up a the fight that they sh should have or wanted to probably. Is it? 
Isn't that the Furia that just had the crazy win against Moist? Yeah. And they went up 2-0 in the series, and then BDS won the next four. Mm. And that's why I'm like, if Astral True. goes down 2-0 in that spot, like, precedent is not good in his favor there for, like, his mental ability. Yeah, but I don't know. They have a different play style as well, so yeah, hard to yeah. say. It is hard to say. Final verdict? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um... Hootie. Yes, sir. For you. Pan's Psycho, because I know you do the highlights. Pan's oh, yeah. Psycho in open qualifier one was a better goal than Daniel's half flip into air dribble flip reset goal in the open qualifier three. It's um, one. Apples and oranges. I, 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 all right, Michael said yes and no, so I want to say yes and no. I, I think yes, I think yes for the culture, oh, you because cowards. we're, we're, we're right here where psychos like people have occasionally attempted them. We've seen them in 1v1 matches where you got more space and time to execute it, but we have very quickly started to see them attempted frequently. And so, Pan and that play, I feel like indicates like that's a marker where we're all remember like that point forward, it's psycho time. Everybody's going to be did doing it see, for clears, whatever else, right? Did you see the Twitter clip of the lobby with Scribbles and yes. some other NA yes, players dude. in there? It's, it's just crazy. Just back psycho, psycho, forward. psycho, psycho. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but I do think that uh, Daniel's goal was more impressive on a mechanic sense. Yes. Pan's obviously 100%. just incredible precision, execution, flawless, beautiful. So satisfying to watch. Uh, but Daniel was just crazy, like unorthodox string of events like rarely are players just awkwardly backwards and then like hop back down to the ground and then pre-flip in the direction that they're not facing like he's just facing this direction he like pre-flip jumps backwards pre-flips a perfect catch into an air dribble and then has like Special. enough control to work himself into a flip reset position as well and i see a lot of people talk about like bad defense and whatever else but i think we have to understand too like haters sometimes the defense thinks there's no chance. There's no way that you can turn that into a scoring opportunity. Whatever you can throw at me, I can save. I know I can't. That's why I'm going to sit here and wait. And then you have somebody that does something that has not ever really been done before, and it elevates. So the next time Chronic sees something like that, he might be a little bit more proactive in defense, right? Like there's this pendulum swing of, of what's, what's possible. We know it's possible. And then the defense responds. And then the offense elevates, right? And I think right there was just a moment where we were like, he's not scoring that. There's no chance. You know, if he does manage to get this on target, I can clear this away easy. Mm -hmm. But Daniel does something special there. And so mechanically, I'm going Daniel. For the culture, I'm going Pan. I like it. It was almost like watching uh, one of those like fighting game clips where you, they have to like get a combo like framed. <laughs> yes. Like, it's like boom, the boom, amount boom, of like, boom, boom, boom. Raw, like button yeah. inputs it's that It's the Dan succession in which it happens. To, like get that goal is like, I would love to see like a control overlay because like what, I don't even know what he did. And I think it was so like, it was improv. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we've seen Joyo where he'll set up on the wall, you know, he goes to the ceiling and then comes down and does like a Macta free set or something. And don't get me wrong, those are absurdly impressive. And it is a chain, but it's something that he's like, it's fluid. He knows it he's going to do it when he's That's on right. The it's a game. Daniel, it felt like he, he's just like. It's improvising. It's just the greatest improv. Yeah, so yeah. creative. So yeah, like I said, mechanics, creativity. I'm going Dan. Uh, but like I said, for the culture, I feel like Pan Psycho is a, a, the stamp of like, here we go, Psycho time. Michael, I got a take for you. LG and OG are better than Gentlemates. Um, ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would say no, but specifically with OG, I'm pretty high on OG. Um, I mm -hmm. think it's quite close. LG, like I said, I think it's the stuff they do out of the game that makes them as good yep. as they are. I also mm -hmm. am on, I am on the train of like the some of the runs they got in regionals mm -hmm. were a little silly. To, like especially that second one where they got swept by NRG, went five with Muffin Men. And you know they beat energy the second time, but you know that's they didn't they, they, they got a lot of, they got a lot of breaks, and so not what uh, you want I'll to see say, out of a major team. Yeah, yeah, like they didn't get a quality win all year, I would say, or all split, I would say, in terms of uh, besides beating OG in the semifinals, they got one quality win, um, and I think OG played Gen G super close when Gen G looked the best that they did. 
Um, I think OG swept Space Station, who a lot of people saying are uh, deserve to be at the major. I don't agree. I still think LG deserved to be at the major. Yeah. They did what they yeah, had agreed. to win, and Space Station didn't, and that's just what it is. But they did beat SSG. They swept SSG. They played Gen.G close. Um, I don't believe OG even met G2. Maybe early. I can't remember. If they didn't, it was probably a watch. It was early. Um, so I'm going to say I think OG has the makeup of a team that is just as good, if not slightly worse. But I think there's a little, still a bit of a gap just uh, between yeah. OG and Genji. So. All right. All right. Our Down. final take here, Yans, we'll throw it at you. Top four in Copenhagen will be either four European teams or three European teams and Falcons slash Furia. Basically, I guess I, no NA top four. Yeah, I guess I have to take it up for the NA teams here because <laughs> nah, 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 I don't believe that. Uh, I'm going to say no. Uh, Gen G and G2 are just up there and they, they absolutely uh, will be able to. Take a shot at that top four. Yeah. So the NA teams, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. USA. <laughs> USA. I put that in there specifically hoping that Jens would have to answer it. So we had to, had to stick up. That's, That's so good. good. Yeah. Well, I was like, I hope no one asked me that question. <laughs> and we have, of course, the French fans who like to cheer mostly for their own team. Um, although, unfortunately, Carmine Corp won't have the blue wall present. Um, but European chanting culture yeah. comes down to cheering for a lot of teams and having a lot of chants and cheers, and that includes USA, USA. But the f most fun thing is to do that when there's a European team playing uh, an Oceania <laughs> team or something. Yeah. Then that's when you pull out the uh, USA yeah. chant. That's so funny. That's awesome. <clears throat> All right, well... That is going to conclude speed taking. We appreciate you guys dropping those takes in the shift cord. As I said earlier in the episode, there's a link down below. You can join the shift cord and drop your take in there or debate <clears throat> uh, some other individuals about whatever you believe for RLCS. Get involved in the discussion there. Uh, that's it for our Rocket League talk. We have covered everything up to this, uh, this point here in the season. Obviously, split one is in the books as far as regionals or open qualifiers. We are going to walk into this major at Copenhagen in just a few more weeks. Um, Yens will be there. Michael, no? No, I have. A, I unfortunately have to go back to the 9 to 5. So. Yeah, I will be there with uh, Faulty Martin, um, who is bringing his camera. I will bring a microphone. So we'll tag team around there and uh, try to catch as many interesting stories and uh, moments as we can. So, yeah. That'll Any final fun. thoughts, Michael? Yeah, um, you know, my, my, my men's league basketball team, we started off one and four oh, uh, okay. in our title defense. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not letting this stop, but we rebounded. Okay, we're three and four now, and we've got our last game of the regular season coming up to secure top four, uh, which will give us a, uh, a bye in the first round of the playoffs. So, you know, if all you guys can just, you know, keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we get to, as we get down to the stretch run of the season, I really appreciate it. Because you know we need this bad. Can't be out of the playoffs year after winning the title. I agree. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have anything well else said. to say? <laughs> no, that's it for me. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I got, Yins, you went to uh, see Do see Dune tonight. How was it? I did. It was visually amazing. Um, I like the story as well, but that's mainly I think because I saw part one yesterday. So for me, it was really intense when it comes to this whole storyline. Yeah. But there are some things that are like, ah, it's an old story. And sometimes it's like, ah, why, why would you have that kind of character development in there? That's like a yeah. missed opportunity. So those moments were in there, but visually it's stunning. It's yeah. absolutely stunning. Just wait until you see real life Dune when Jason Al Ghaib comes in and wins Genji the Major. Jason, of course, being first. Now that's a reference in there. Yeah, some people will get it, some people won't. I like My it. My Wadib <laughs> is in the yellow and gold, or the yellow and black. All right, gentlemen, was a wonderful time as always. Uh, we'll see. I'm not 100 sure about next week what we're gonna do. We may drop you another episode to uh, fill the gap between now and major. We'll we'll keep you updated. Uh, check in either way. We might drop something. But that's gonna conclude Shiftcast episode number seven. We appreciate you hanging out, and we'll catch you next time.